The new Frozen movie is barely disguised political propaganda. Okay, okay, I promise I can back that up. In the movie, our hero sisters learn a dark secret that their power-mad grandfather betrayed the native people of their land, slaughtering their leader and stealing their wealth. This is a well-worn plot device. Indigenous innocents terrorized by greedy colonialists. This is Hollywood attempting to say something profound about the origins of the real America. This is fake history invented by Learned a lot about this guy, Howard Zinn. Back in 1980, Zinn was just an anonymous history professor when he published this book, A People's History of the United States. It had the modest aim of smashing America's self-satisfied mythology. We grew up with the idea that we are special, we are different. We are the Boy Scouts of the world. Well, when you look at the history of this country, we were not. We were not. Zinn wanted to flip the fairy tale about America to expose our heroes as bloodthirsty villains. And his top target, right there in chapter one, was Christopher Columbus. According to Zinn, indigenous society was a perfectly progressive utopia a world where human relations were more egalitarian than in Europe, and where the relations among men, women, children, and nature were more beautifully worked out than perhaps any place in the world. The Arawak Indians Columbus encountered were unspoiled by petty capitalist desires. These Arawaks were remarkable for their hospitality, their belief in sharing. Columbus was a greedy thug. Columbus had to make good his promise to fill the ships with gold. At one part of the island, he got into a fight with Indians who refused to trade as many bows and arrows as he and his men wanted. Two were run through with swords and bled to death. Columbus was the prime mover of centuries of relentless plunder. Thus began the history, 500 years ago, of the European invasion of the Indian settlements in the Americas. That beginning is conquest, slavery, death. Zinn invented this flipped history of Columbus as the ultimate villain. Aggression, expansion, the enslavement of, of other peoples. And that's what Columbus represents. But Zinn's book is not history. It's a new fairy tale. One that strategically slices away some inconvenient complexities. For starters, Columbus did not introduce slavery to America. One of his early journal entries records how the Arawaks bore marks of wounds on their bodies, which indicated that people came from other islands and had tried to capture them. Pre-colonial America was not a perfectly peaceful utopia. The Arawaks were in constant conflict with nearby tribes including the Caribs, who had a tradition of cannibalizing their enemies. They'd chop up the hearts of particularly courageous adversaries and feed them to their children. And a standard warfare tactic for many tribes was disemboweling defeated enemies and tying them to a tree with their own intestines. Every civilization is built on cruelty. These ugly facts don't mean that Indians were simple savages. The egalitarian parliamentary system of the Iroquois nation may have inspired key features of the U.S. Constitution. Now, Christopher Columbus committed about an average number of atrocities for a colonialist, which was a lot. But his discovery also connected the continents, supercharging innovation in food, medicine, literature, and technology. And the true tragedy of his discovery was entirely accidental as those same new trade routes enabled a cross-continental germ exchange that wiped out up to 90% of America's indigenous population. All of these things are true at the exact same time. Anyone selling you some simple soap opera story arc about unique American evil is not trying to educate you. He's trying to enslave you to an ideology. That's Zinn's mission, ideological enslavement. 
his blind enthusiasm for the grand collectivist experiments of Stalin and Mao left him mute when those experiments turned massively murderous. Zinn was an active member of the Communist Party at the height of the Cold War. Zinn's uh, enslavement initiative has gone remarkably well. A People's History became a publishing phenomenon, eventually selling two million copies and infiltrating primary and college curricula, reaching millions of students. And the book is a mainstay in college, featured on over 1,500 curriculums. For many students, Zinn is the primary American history they receive. Zinn himself becomes a pop culture icon. We have made some improvement in our barbarity over 300 years, I would say, no? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna go there, huh? <laughs> And there's a certain category of American laborer that finds Zinn's simple stories just irresistible. I'm Woody Harrelson, and I'm sitting here with Howard Zinn, one of my great heroes. Hollywood just loves Zinn, with A-listers lining up to perform live readings of his work. And Howard's book was very helpful. You want to fight on the right side of history. Do you want to watch Jason Bourne? Aragon, Whistler, and the bald kidnapper from The Princess Bride read a Zinn speech calling for a Marxist revolution? Oh yes you do. The wealth is distributed in this country as not simply to require a small reform, but to, but to require, require a drastic, drastic reallocation, reallocation of, of wealth. Drastic reallocation of wealth. From when Columbus met the Arawaks, it was just non-stop bullying people and taking over their resources. And that's how Zinn's politics make their way to your movie screens. So along with the singing snowman, you get some subtle propaganda. Hey kids, your cartoon heroes are unwitting agents of an evil empire built on plunder. And you are too.